Greetings and salutations. Thanks for hanging out with me for a while. This is a beginner's introduction to bash shell scripting. What I'm going to do in this video is I'm going to teach you how to write very basic shell scripts that will allow you to automate tasks that you do in a bash terminal. This video is going to be very simple to start out with and then later on I'm going to introduce you to some more advanced concepts. However, I am not going to be able to cover everything. I couldn't cover everything that goes into bash scripting in 10 videos. The idea here is just to give you enough to get started and then I encourage you to go off and learn more about the basic concepts that I'll show you today. Do not be one of those people who says I'll never learn how to do this. I'm not smart enough. It's over my head. If I can learn how to write bash shell scripts, guess what? You can too because I'm actually a late bloomer when it comes to doing this. And I have gotten myself to the place now where I can write pretty much full-fledged programs using the bash scripting language. It's very powerful. So why do you want to do this in the first place? Well, obvious, because you're lazy. I mean, that's the only reason that anybody would want to learn how to do this. Because what I'm assuming is, is that you already know your way around the terminal and you're probably using it to do whatever you do with it. And you might find yourself typing in the same commands all the time. And in that case, why not just stick them all into a script and turn them into a command of their own? And that's all scripting is. You just take a bunch of commands and you put it in one place and then you give it a name. You come up with a new command that does all the stuff that big string of commands did. You can see how this is a very powerful skill to have. So the first thing that you're going to need is a text editor. We have Nano up on the screen which runs in a terminal out there in the world of Linux and computer programming. People are very passionate about their text editors. You will hear people talk about how wonderful VI is, which is another command line editor like this. Uh, VI is very old school, and it's a little bit harder to learn. If you want to go learn it, great. I am very happy to use Nano. And, of course, there are all kinds of graphic user interface type editors like GNOME. You have gedit, and uh, pretty much every distribution of Linux out there comes out comes with a text editor already included and any one of them will do. In this video today we're going to be using Nano to write some basic scripts and then I'm going to show you some more advanced stuff uh, in gedit and the only reason I'm going to do that is because I've already got it written so it makes sense. So the first thing that you need to do is to create your shebang or hashbang. So we're just going to go up here to the top of the screen and this is the first line that you want to do and we want to start out with a hashtag or a pound sign or whatever you want to call that thing and then we have an exclamation point and then we use a slash bin bash now you'll see that the editor has picked up on what that is and has changed the color and that's one of the nice things about a good text editor is that it can actually interpret the commands that you're using and it can uh, make it so that it sets them apart color wise and so you know what you're doing now the editor knows that we're writing a script so what kind of things would you put in a script well one of the things that a lot of people do in Ubuntu and anything based on Ubuntu is you can update the system run updates from the terminal and that's usually two commands so let's put them in here sudo apt update it's a very familiar command and then to actually get it to do it there's sudo apt dist upgrade so let me make sure I type that correctly and I did and we can put that in there and that ladies and gentlemen is a script that's all we need to make it work. There's nothing more than that. It's just commands in there. That's all it is. Now, this script will run, but what we might want to do is add some stuff in here to make it a little bit easier to uh, deal with later on should we go to edit it. 
and that is we need to put some comments in. So to do a comment in a script, just use once again that uh, pound or hash mark, whatever you want to call it, and then you can type anything you want. Anything that appears on the other side of that hash mark, it's just going to be ignored when the script is executed. So we can put anything we want here. And I just put in simple script to update Ubuntu. Just that simple. Now, I must warn you that I am not very good at typing and talking at the same time, so I'm going to make errors, and I will probably miss them, and you all can point at the screen and laugh and snicker if you want to, but you get the point. It doesn't have to be perfect. I haven't done that so far, but chances are I will. So we have a very basic script here, and one of the things that I always like to do with my scripts is I like to add an exit at the end, which is simply a command that just tells the system that you're done pretty obvious. You don't have to put it there, but I like to have it. So now we need to save our script and give your script a unique name. And in this case, we're just going to give it, you know, a real unique name. We're going to call it update. I mean, it's very creative, isn't it? You can call it whatever you want. I actually have a script that does this and I'm going to show it to you a little later in the video that's just simply called up. So we want to save that as this text file as update. And that is that. So how do we get our script to run? Well, let's go ahead and quit our text editor for the moment. And let's see if our script is in our work folder here, which I am calling junk. And you'll see that we have update. Uh, if I just uh, type in update, nothing going to happen. Because we haven't told the system that this is a program yet, nor does it know that it exists. So we need to do some things to make that happen. So the very first thing that we need to do is change the mode of the file and the command is change mod or change mode and we want to do plus x and the name of our file is update and should be able to find it and it does. I'm using the tab key to autofill. This can save you some typing. So we're going to change this to add the execute function. And now, if we list it, you'll notice that the color has changed. That's because the shell has figured out that that is an executable. We can test our executable by running it from the directory that we're currently in, this junk directory that we're in right now. So I, I can tell the shell that by just doing dot, which is the current directory, and then a slash, and then the name of our program, which is going to be update. Once again, I use tab to autofill, and if I run this, it should just take off and start doing it. Well, it's asking for a password, because we have to do that with elevated privileges. And would you looky look here, it is going off and it is doing that. And it's going to update everything in the system. Now, the way I have this set up now is I'm not passing anything uh, to the... Uh, Yep, I think I messed something up. <laughs> I did, as a matter of fact. I mistyped something. Good, I'm glad. Because what we do is go back to nano, name of our file. Let's see what we did wrong. Ah, that's what we did wrong. I put a dash here where we didn't need one. So I, I messed it up. Good. So we kind of proved that the basic script works. I don't need to go back and run the upgrade part of it. You saw that it was working. Um, one of the things that you might want to do is to tell the apt program here that you just want to go ahead and let it do it. So if you put YY at the end, then it won't prompt you. So let's go ahead and do that. Yes, I see that. I'm going to fix it. YY. Get that out of there. Okay, let's try that one more time. See, it's okay that I make mistakes because you're going to make mistakes. It's fine. It's no problem whatsoever. You're going to do this. It's, it takes a little, even somebody who's done it a million times, you're going to make some mistakes. Now, somebody asked me the other day when I was showing this uh, in another video, a uh, comment on another video, why the two whys. Basically, what that tells the uh, 
apt program to do, which performs the update, you're basically telling apt, you're saying, okay, I want you to do this regardless, it makes no difference. Now, this is kind of a semi-dangerous way to up, update your system, and if you're not cool with that, you might want to leave that out, because if you do, then it'll prompt you and you'll see what's going on. Depends on how you want to use this, but if you ever want it to run completely automatically, you're going to have to put that in. So we've made our changes and we use control and O to write our changes to our script. Let's exit and we'll go ahead and clear the screen. I used control L to do that or you can type in the word clear, whatever works best for you. And let's see, now we're gonna rerun our script. And since I already used uh, sudo earlier, it remembered that. So now it's telling me, yeah, there's a couple of packages that are gonna get updated and there you go. Now we have done that with just one thing there. Now, what we really want the system to do is we want to know, have it uh, be able to run that script. We don't have to put this in front of it. And to do that, we're going to have to put it somewhere that the system can find it. See, when your shell opens up, it sets a lot of different variables for your environment. And one of them is your path which is just a place where it looks for programs. So let's go in here and let's look at our path and let's see where we can put things that it can find it. So what I want to do first is just show me the path. So I'm going to echo path. And yes, we're going to get into talking about variables here in just a little bit. So you'll see we have all of these directories that are separated by a semicolon. And we've got home, slash Joe slash Ben. That's the first place it's going to look if we want it to execute a program. And then we have user local S Ben, use USR local Ben, and on down the line here. So we need to put our script in one of these places. If you're going to be doing a lot of scripting, then what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to create your own personal Ben folder. So you do that really simply by just creating a bin folder in your home directory. So let me um, show you what's in my home directory here. You'll see that I have one called bin. It's right here. Now when you create that little directory, and you can do it anyway, you can do it with the file manager or you can do it with a command. It doesn't make any difference. Just lowercase bin. In Ubuntu, and most other Linux distributions, what happens is, is that when you log out and log back in, it'll know that that's there. And it will add this to the beginning of your path that it goes to look for programs. So we could stick our program into our local bin folder, and then all we would have to do is type update, and we would no longer have to tell it it's right here. Now, one of the reasons that you have to do this is because it's a security feature. You just don't want to run any program that's in the current directory because somebody might slip some malware in your current directory and they can name it the name of a regular command and then it would run first because it would look in the current directory first. You can set your computer to do that if you want to, but I would not recommend it if you want to get in and edit your own path statement. So. That is our first script. We have written a script. So let's, that was so much fun. Let's write another because there are other things that we can do with scripts besides stuff like that. So let's do one that's slightly more advanced, just a little bit further down the road from that one. So we're going to go back to nano again. And we have nano open. And what's the first thing that we want to do? Well, we need to tell it what shell we're going to use. And we use the whizbang, hashbang, shabang. That's what it's called. So we're going to do bin. And this one's going to be bash. By the way, uh, if you look at other people's scripts, you're going to see that some of them run in a shell called sh. It's not bash. That is for portability. Every Unix and Linux computer in the world is compatible with sh. So a lot of portable scripts and a lot of little scripts, even when I write scripts, sometimes I, I run them in SH to make sure that they'll run anywhere. But most everything has bash as well. There are all kinds of shells too. There's, uh, you know, Z, ZSH, there's C shell, there's 
all kinds, but we're just going to concentrate on bash. We're getting ahead of ourselves with that sort of thing. So let's do something a little bit different. And I'm going to go ahead and write my comment. And uh, we're going to do something to check our system. Check our system. Did I, yeah, I didn't mess that up. Good. Okay. So the first line that we're going to do is uh, maybe we want to check our the memory. So uh, let's do this. We are going to echo, which is, just tells it to print something on the screen. And anything in quotes will get echoed. So we're going to put memory. Right? Did I spell that correctly? I hope so. Colon. There you go. And then we'll run the free command after that. So we'll run free dash h. And what that does is it will tell us what how much memory we're using. And so the next one that we would like to probably see is how much disk space we're using and what we've got. So let's do this. We'll echo disk usage colon. Okay. And now we're going to use the command du. We're also going to use the h there. And let's see what other information might want we we might what want we we I can't say it. What other information might we want to know? I got it. That's insane. Okay. Let's think uh, for a minute here. Let's look at the uptime. No, 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 no. Wait a minute. Let's echo that. All right, and the command for that is real simple. It's uptime. Exit. So we have another little tiny script here, and what this is going to do is it's going to throw all of this information on the screen. So let's see what happens. Go ahead and Control O, and we'll just give this a stupid name like SYS check. Dash. Don't put any spaces in there. Can't do that. You got to have an underscore or a dash in there, or it's not going to know what the deal is. So let's go ahead and save that. That saved. And let us do change mode. And we want to add, we're going to plus X. Plus X. There we go. And syscheck was the name of our program. Syscheck. Okay. And there we have that. And this time I'm going to actually put this in my bin folder even before I test it. We're going to see what happens. So I'm going to move this to my home bin. Move SYS to my home bin folder like that. Now when you put that extra slash at the end there it tells the shell hey I want to put it in here I'm not trying to replace it that's kind of important so let's go ahead and do that and we didn't get any output so we know it works so now just to fire this off there's our command let's see if it will actually run. Yes it does it's not pretty but it is there it actually does what it's supposed to do. So I kind of got I kind of got some funky. Uh, let's check that real quick here. So I want to look in uh, that same directory. I'll check something out here because we got something strange. Ah, see, I made it. No, wait a minute. Duh. I uh, don't think that's the command I wanted. Disk usage. What I want is df actually. DF will show us what we want. That's disk free. Okay. So let's go ahead and do that. Exit out. And this is how you write scripts. You just play with them until you get them right. So if I run that command again, oh, now I get something a little better. See, when I go to disk usage, it tells me about all the disks on my machine and how much is used and how much is unused and all that other stuff. And it shows me the uptime. So you get the idea. You can take all of these little commands and you can put them together. 
So, a couple of things to talk about while we're uh, talking about these scripts. One of the things that I should be doing, uh, this is um, if you are going to be doing uh, a script that's going to be running on a bunch of different machines with a bunch of different users, is I shouldn't assume that the path is going to be this the path statement is going to know where it is so what I should actually do is figure out where all of these programs are so let's look and see where free is so we're going to go into free let's see and the, and the command we're going to use is which now you see how that tells me exactly where that is that's in slash USR universal system resources not user even though it looks like user and Ben so what you really ought to do to be very proper when you write these scripts is you ought to put them in put those paths in here like that and the reason why is because you can't assume that every user on your system is going to have that um, location in their path but if you're going to be doing this for yourself or you're going to be doing it for a pretty standard Ubuntu system and it's only going to run on Ubuntu guess what it doesn't matter I don't do this all the time myself this is just being very very cautious when you do things like that so let's find out where uh, the um, DF command is it's probably going to be in exactly the same place but you never know See, that one is just in bin. That's just a system. So it's not under USR. So that makes it pretty easy to work with, though, because all we got to do is just do this. Now we're all proper with that. Control X. Once again, we will just run it to see whether it works. And we got the same output on the screen, so we know we got it right. And it's all very proper. So now that we've written our basic script and we've put it in our own local bin folder, one question that I know will be asked is where do we put that for everybody else? What if we want to write a script that all the users on the computer can get to? Well, then we just put it in a, a directory uh, called USR. So let's go ahead and let's clear this screen. And we will cd USR local bin. And when we go in here and take a look, you see that we already have a program here. It's a program called XBT. It's one that I've written, and it belongs in that directory. Any script that we put in there or any program that we compile from source that we put in there becomes part of the system. Any program that is not managed by the package manager goes in there. So that is where your scripts go if you want everybody to use them or you do not have to create a local bin folder if you're fine if you're the only person that's using your computer you can put all your scripts in there as well so those are the two places where you can put a script so let's move on to a couple of more complex ideas you know everything you need to know at this point to be able to write a script that's all there is to it but if you want to get more into programming, then there are a few concepts that you need to understand. I'll tell you what, the first one that we need to look at is variables, because a variable is nothing more than uh, some sort of chunk of text or data that you want to put into memory to call up later. That's all a memory is, we, uh, a variable is. We've already seen a variable, which is your path statement. We've already seen that, but you can create your own variables. So let's create a variable, and our variable is going to be called foo. Now, traditionally, variables are all caps, but you don't have to do that if you're creating your own. I am going to just put in here foo equals, and i got to be equals, not plus, easy Linux. All right and now we can echo foo to see what that is a variable always starts with a dollar sign just like that okay look we have created a variable and in there it is foo that will sit in memory as long as this shell is open 
it will stay there. So what we can do is we can put useful information in these variables and then we can call them later in a script. So let's write another variable because that was fun but this one let's make it a little bit more complicated. Let's do a variable and we'll call it time. And time is going to equal the output from a command. So we use uh, quotes and then we say we need to set a variable within our variable. So we use a dollar sign and then parentheses. We run a command. The command that we're going to use is date and that'll give us everything that we need to know. And not only is it going to give us the time, but it's going to give us the time and the date. When is that going to happen? When I hit this enter key. So when this variable is executed, when we create this variable, we will lock down whatever time and date it is that moment. So here we go. Now, if I echo time, now I need to echo it. This variable that I have created called time, and assuming that I have done everything the way I should, now it's giving us the information comes out of that variable, the output of the date command. That is a variable. And when your system boots up, as I have already mentioned, you already have a bunch of variables set. Or you have things that have already run. So let's see here. Let's go and look at one of those. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use nano again. And we're going to go to a file that is in your home directory called profile. Now this is one of the configuration files. And you'll see that essentially what it does is it goes to, it, it, it's doing two things in this file. The first one is it's looking to see whether you have, uh, you know, what bash version you've got and whether you have a bash RC file, which is really where all of this is supposed to go. And we're going to get into if statements in just a minute. That's the next thing. But the main thing that I wanted to show you here is that it's, this is where it looks for that bin directory right here, this chunk of text right here. And of course, the person that wrote this, they commented it out very well, so we know what it is. So essentially, what this if statement does is it looks to see whether this directory exists. Okay? If we have that path, then what it's going to do is it's going to include that private bin. Of course, they're looking for home local bin here. And then up here, it's looking for one that is uh, directly in the home directory. So you could do that either way. See here, we've got dot local, which is a configuration directory that's in your home directory. And if you have a bin in there, then we can throw that in the path. Or we can just use our local bin. So it's actually covering all the bases here, which is really nice. So it's actually this piece of code. I think I highlighted the one down there. Doesn't matter. You get the point. This is how this is done. And this adds that to that particular variable, which was actually the path statement was set somewhere else. So you can keep adding to variables. You can do all kinds of stuff with them. Okay, so let's go ahead and get out of that. So now that we have covered variables, the next thing I want to show you is uh, functions. And functions are really cool. Now we're getting into not writing simple little scripts with just a list of commands, but now we're getting into writing things that are more like programs. So to show you that, I'm going to jump to another desktop here, and we're going to look at a program that I have written called Up. Now Up is kind of a bit more of a fancier update program, the one that I just showed you, it, but it does some interesting things. So the first thing that this program does is it executes a command. You gotta you gotta think that this is when when it's reading uh, the shell is reading your script. It's doing it from the top down. So always think in terms of it going down from the top. So the first thing that it does is it sets this little thing right here, where what this does it tells the shell interpreter if there's an error, just quit, just stop, don't even do anything, just exit out and. Uh, You'll, the reason why we're doing that is because this is an update. If we have any errors that pop up, you really don't want this to continue. 
And then we're declaring what's called a function. There are a couple of formats for writing out functions. This is the one that I use all the time. So we, we declare the name of the function and then you'll see we have parentheses right together and then we have these brackets. All of this that is in these brackets is like, a, it's a code. It's just like a script in, in and of itself, it's code. And you can have anything that will run in here and but it's not the system's not going to run that what it's going to do with a function is it's going to read it in memory and it's going to treat it like it's a command in your script so this gets really cool so we have a function here called update and then i have a function here called clean which has some commands in it and this basically just runs auto remove which takes out old packages and auto clean which cleans up the app cache of things that we can't really install anymore it does those two commands so we have three functions here or uh, let's see we've got I've got uh, one function two functions three functions we have one called leave which is a, essentially a function that echoes this thing on the screen and then it exits that's all it does and then we've got help because if you're going to publish a piece of software, even if it's something simple like this, you really ought to offer a help screen which explains how it works. So what this function is, is nothing more than what is known as a here document. It uses the cat command and then it prints everything on the screen up to this token right here which is called EOF. So that is how this works and then you put your text in here and then down here you'll see it says EOF so what happens is is that all of these functions get loaded into memory now we get down to the part of the script that does executions and when we get to executions uh, the first thing it's going to do is echo the name of the script and I always put in there tell them who we are and then we do update and clean so this would be the first uh, function that you could uh, put in you could put in a uh, an option to get the program to do something else and it will run the update function then it'll run the clean function and then it will leave which means it exits the program if you put in uh, up help what this is going to do is it's going to fire off just up help which is that single function right there now what we're looking at here is if statements which kind of go along with functions because an if statement essentially it tests for something anything in the brackets here it's saying if this variable equals that then the next thing that you want to do is you want to go ahead and run this and then when you're done exit an if statement is it's got kind of in its own format you could actually have all of this on one line if you wanted to but it would be kind of hard to read so that's why it's done this way so essentially you start out with an if and then you run your test here this is basically saying if this equals this then you can do this you can also set this where it doesn't equal that so if you can do it the opposite way it can say if this uh, variable or this value equals this or doesn't equal this then do that so I hope that didn't confuse you too much but basically it's saying if this equals that right there then do that and then exit uh, so then we have to check for an invalid argument somebody might put something weird in there uh, so in that case uh, it checks to see that uh, it's actually there in other words if there's anything else in the argument other than help or clean then what this is going to do right here is it's just going to say okay that's an invalid argument you're an idiot go away and then at the very end of the program if I just type up and none of these if statements are met none of this in other words I didn't put any variable in at all then it just runs the update script in this function right here and then it jumps down to the leave function and it's gone so that is the basics of flow control and how that is done using functions and if statements so you see how uh, we can it, it actually is is just building upon simple stuff we start out with simple commands then we can start doing functions we can set variables and let's look at some programs now that use variables and how they're used 
So I'm going to go all the way down here, and we're looking at a script that I use that I called Sync All. And this relies very heavily on setting variables. So let's go down here uh, and uh, look at this. And it's not, this does use functions as well. So we have a function here called transfer status, which basically is an if statement that makes sure everything is working properly. And if it isn't, it exits with an error right there. And then we have transfer. Uh, this uses uh, some of the variables here. To set the variables on this one, we go all the way down to pass the functions. And this is unusual in a script, actually, but there's a reason why this is done this way. So the first one is, is we set the net IP, which is the local IP address on my, uh, what all of the IP addresses for my local network start out with. And then to get the local IP, which is the IP of the machine, we need to do some really sexy stuff here where we're like once again we're setting a variable and it equals right here but then you see we execute this command and what this command does is it goes and it finds that information using grep which is a terminal command that just you can use to find information within the output of another command so that's what this does and then it, once it gets that information it throws it in there and then the program uses it so that is you know some of the sexy things that you can do with variables the next thing that I want to show you is a loop so let's go here and look for one that we can use for a loop and this is a program called show that uses a loop and a loop is basically just telling it to do something over and over again for files so you see we have our functions that we're putting in here once again we load those in memory and then we come down here to execution and when the program runs what we do is is we put file names into this so we can add more than one file name so right here uh, if I put help in then it does the help page once again but right here as we under the execution section right here this is your file names and this is all of the arguments to your command basically it goes through the list and that is all of the variables that equal the arguments and for each one it does something so we have do and then it jumps up to display which is one of the variables set here right there and then when it's done with that it will go back and do it again until it runs out of stuff here once it's done, it's done. That's what the done is for there. And when it's done, there, it puts a little warning up there that says no more files. So that's the basics of a loop. And it's looking for you to press any key to move on to the next file. Pretty simple stuff there. Okay, finally, let's take a look at menus because what good is a program if you, if you don't have a menu? to look at. So the one we want to look at here is XPT. This is the biggest bash script that I have ever done and it is available on GitHub. This is a self-contained program that is written for bash and it performs all kinds of backup functions and for this program we have a menu driven situation. Up to now we have looked at programs that we run in bash that what they do is you uh, or scripts rather programs interchangeable at this point where you can type the command in and what it will do is, is it'll run and then it'll exit pretty simple stuff well a, a computer program really doesn't do that what it does is is it hangs around and it gives you options to do other things so let us roll down here and look at all this lovely code and we're gonna scroll through here and there's a lot of code code to scroll scroll through a lot of functions with XBT. It does a lot of stuff, but here we go. Now we've gotten down to the menu function. So the first thing that the menu function does is it has a here document, like I showed earlier, that it describes what you're supposed to do. And now we have uh, some, some other if statements and stuff here. But let's get down to our menu. It's right here. So we use the read command 
right here to grab a choice and let's say you typed in the letter one this goes into the case command right here and what this does is basically it says if you chose one then the first option here is backup if you chose two then it's going to restore if you chose three then it's going to set up a drive and these are all functions that it's calling and if you chose zero then it's going to go into an exit sequence and it's going to get out so the case command sort of works a little bit like an if statement you'll notice that with if statements we always ended with phi backwards well the same thing is for case and this is how you would do menus in scripts and once you put all of this stuff together you can end up with full programs you you have a full program so if we go down to the execution section of XBT, even though it's a big program and you'll see that it's got a lot of uh, if statements where it's looking for options that come out of the thing here, you'll see that the actual execution of the program, it's just one line. It clears the screens, it echoes greetings and salutations, a program I wrote would have to, and then it says greeting, and it automatically throws us to that greeting. And at the end of every function, it'll put us back in that greeting. And that's how we stay in the program. So that's the difference between a script that runs straight through and a program. So there you go. I have either enlightened you or confused you. I hope I have done a little of both. Because now what you can do is you can go out and you can look up these basic concepts. So you can look up how to do functions, variables, if statements, menus, and loops in your uh, bash scripts of your very own and you can learn how to do this yourself it is pretty awesome people always ask me all the time what is a good book for me to learn how to work at the command line and write scripts let me tell you one of the best ones out there is the Linux command line by William Schatz and I will have this link in the description for uh, this video and you can come look here, and it is available for free download under Creative Commons. So this link right here will take you to where you can download this particular book, and you can learn more about Bash scripting. There are a ton of really good books out there, and also there are websites everywhere that have bits and pieces of code that you can use. So you want to make sure that uh, as you're doing your scripts, if you come up with something that you don't know how to use, that you remember, don't get frustrated, go look it up. Just type up what you want to do, what you're trying to get done, like uh, make, uh, you know, set up a menu in a bash script, and it will teach you how to use the case command, and it will give you examples. There will be examples all over the web that you can look at to figure that out. Plus, this is a really great place to start, the Linux command line by William shots one final thought before we wrap up the video keep everything that you write make sure that you set aside a place in your home directory that you are going to keep all of the scripts that you write even if you write a script that you're only going to use a couple of times the reason why is that the more code you have on hand the more tools you have in your toolbox. So later on, if you have to write a program, you can use what you've already done that you know works as an example and you can build upon it. Thank you for watching this video. I hope it helped. I hope it confused you enough that you now want to go learn more. I really do. That you're like going, what is he talking about? I need to find this out. That's kind of the goal of the video. Your feedback is always welcomed. Please be sh sure to give Easy Linux a like on Facebook if you're a Facebook user. Also, check out Easy Linux on the web. There you are going to find links to a lot of the bash scripts that I showed you in this video, so you can go download them for yourselves from GitHub. It's on that page. Also, check out freedompenguin.com for more great videos and articles about Linux from contributors such as myself. A great clearinghouse of information is freedompenguin.com. And that is it for now. We'll do it again soon. Thank you.